What's up, family? When I look at the depth of the murder of Nipsey Hussle, um, it's what people are saying online and what people aren't saying online that all lead to what I'm talking about on the nigga factory. Parts one and two, and we're working on three now. What many people are saying online is that he's a great activist, a wonderful father, a man that loves his community. And by having the need to say those things, like meaning he's a man with children, by nature a man with children should be a good father. Um, the norm should become that by having any income, you should be a man of your community. The norm should also be that he was a family man. Um, these should be norms for us as a community. The very fact that we, or so many of us, feel compelled to say those things out loud links to what the nigga factory's effects have already done to us as a people. The nigga factory's programming has already been that we are not, as black men, responsible parents and, and loving fathers. The image of us, the reputation of us, is that we are not good family men, that we are not good community activists and leaders. That's the impact of the nigga factory. That's why this is so important to understand what the nigga factory does to the mindset of not only whites, but blacks and everyone else in between. There's also some narratives going on online that dispute whether or not this was a gang related crime. And they talk about the fact that um, Nipsey was working on a documentary about Dr. Sabi. They talk about the fact that he was becoming a man of influence in the community, buying up property, teaching investments, teaching STEM programs for students. Um, and that, again, leads back to what the power of the Digger Factory has had on our community and on the world. Um, we are trying, many people are trying to combat the narratives that this is simply black on black crime or simply gang violence. We're striving to combat that narrative because that narrative has been thoroughly injected into our world. I want to make it clear that it's not to say that there is no gang violence. There is gang violence. It's not to say that there is no black on black violence. There is black on black violence. There's white on white violence. There's Asian on Asian violence. It is to say that the overwhelming norms of perception for us as black people is that we're not gonna we're not caring for our families as black men in particular. That we're not community oriented. Um, and where did these norms come from? And that's where the nigger factory comes in. I, I, I've been striving to help everyone see and, and expose the realities of this factory. On another level, his murder, which is still fresh in everybody's hearts, is still frustrating, is still sad to everybody. And I, I send my love out to his girlfriend, Lauren, uh, Lauren London, I think is her name, and to his family and to all of his fans. I, I never really listened to his music, but I know he has millions of fans out there and to fellow artists that are all discouraged and rightfully so, just, just feeling helpless in some ways. You know, I saw a IG of... Rhymers, I think it was Game who was just, you could tell that his pain was deep. And he was saying he couldn't sleep. And you could tell, you know, I saw David Banner, I saw IG, I think it was an IG of him, and he was just saying how distraught he is, you know. 
And it's disturbing for all of us. And yet I see a trend of people saying that, you know, he's the kind of man that we all need to aspire our men to be like. And while I agree with that to some extent, meaning his trajectory of maybe a gang member or maybe he was just affiliated with a gang or close to gang activity to becoming a man of, you know, popularity in the hip hop game. And then he made some money through that apparently and started to own real estate. This trajectory is an inspiring trajectory, but not for all people. It is for those that maybe come from that same reality. What I tend to see us do as a people is we do what the nigga factory wants us to do, which is lift up trajectories of previous years of violence or gang affiliation or drug dealing. I'm not saying that he, that Nipsey did this. I'm just saying this tends to be a, a, a prototype that is lifted up in our culture that I think we need to stop lifting up. So this prototype is that, yeah, I do what I got to do when I'm young. So let me go out here and do various illegal acts. Let me go out here and sell drugs. Let me go out here and bang. Or let me go out here and act hard. And then as I get older, I will change my ways once I get it. It meaning money or power or influence. I'll change my ways and start to buy back the block. But meanwhile... Whenever that prototype is lifted up as the prototype for our black men, and even black women, meaning that's the kind of guy I want. I want the bad boy turned good guy. The problem with that prototype is that there's a all new batch of people following in that same trajectory. And what we tend to do is forget about the fact that many of the people that follow in that prototype and that trajectory get detoured before they're able to recognize their full potential and before they're able to evolve completely, which I want to think that Nipsey was about to evolve completely. But he was in transition to evolving from what I could see. And the detour that starts to happen is prison. Death, murder. And further entanglement in the streets. I've often said this before. I feel like we owe the streets nothing. Do we owe our friends something? Yes. Do we owe our community something? Yes. But this term, the streets, the hustle, we owe it nothing. And I wish we would make a clear-cut distinction between the good that Nipsey, but also many others that are activists, that aren't famous, they're not celebrities, the good that many of us in our community are doing, from owning businesses to owning land to giving back to the community to helping the community to teach, to mentor, that we can separate those absolutely right attributes, positive and great attributes, separate them from the things that we have now had ample examples of how this isn't healthy, meaning gang affiliation, um, drug dealing, robbing, thieving, so on and so forth. So these types of things are one thing and the things that he was evolving into is another, I wish that we would start to get more critical and more detailed in the things that we're lifting up so our youth can understand 
that evolving is fantastic, but you don't have to start from point one. We have a new batch of children that are being born right now. Newborns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven year olds who are trying to determine their space in life. And I go to middle schools, I go to elementary schools, and I go to high schools. These are kids who are striving to determine which route they want to go in in life. And when we just sloppily lift up all attributes of a human being just because they have started to evolve, but don't denounce the aspects of that human being that caused the possible demise of that human being, that caused, very likely could have caused the demise of that human being, very likely in many, and in many instances, instances does cause the demise of many black men. There's many black men who are doing community activism, who are giving back. But what many of them have had to go through is a detour that came from the negative aspects that they were conditioned into believing was normal and is admirable or at least justifiable. So, Anytime you have a death of anybody, I've always believed that that person leaves this earth with gifts from their life. And I hope that one of the many gifts that we receive from Nipsey is to start to critique the lifestyles that have become normalized for our young men and women, the type of men that our young women have become conditioned to accept as a good crop of black men, the type of men that our young men are looking up to to suggest, I want to be like him or, you know, that person, that we start to get a real critique and we place the underworld, gang affiliation, drug dealing, the streets, we place that in its proper perspective, which in my opinion is all negative. It's all negative. And I want to reiterate, community, friends, that's not negative. I'm saying literal gang affiliation, literal drug dealing, literal. These things have become accepted as just part of our hard walk in life and I would like to see us denounce that and start to look at that as a negative attribute and the positive attributes of owning land, of redirecting our anger, redirecting our um, character to, to understand how to resolve conflicts without violence and to understand when there's a need to protect and when there's possibly a need for violence. But having those real good intricate conversations as a community so that we can save this new batch of children who otherwise will likely walk in the exact same footsteps. At best, they will walk in the same footsteps as a Tupac who died way too early, or at best, will walk in the footsteps of a Nipsey Hussle who died way too early. Um, and at worst, we'll be very confused as to what exactly is heroism, what exactly is the prototype of a good and strong black man, what exactly is normalcy when it comes to our superstars and their life expectancy. Because the last thing I want to say is that we are becoming or we've already become conditioned to accept, dig this, to accept that our superstars, our top tier entertainers, we are conditioned to believe that it is acceptable for them to be gunned down our entertainers 
that it is acceptable for them to be gunned down in broad daylight in the streets of America. Just digest that for a moment. We say that we're infuriated. We say that we're saddened. We post, it trends. But these same things have been happening for decades now. I'd like for you to name the other genres of music where this happens as consistently. It possibly happens at all, but other genres of music where consistently their top tier entertainers are murdered in the middle of the street. And maybe I'm missing it, so please educate me. I'm really saying this sincerely. Talk to me, because I don't see it. We have been conditioned to believe that this is normal. And who has been elevated to be our top tier artist tends to be in these recent years people from either gang affiliation or straight up gang related, crime, drug dealing. Just, just check that out for a moment. Just think about that. Our top tier artists that are elevated for us to admire, elevated by white supremacists and elevated by us, people in our own community generally tend to be from that background. And when I say generally, I'm going to say, and this is non-scientific, I'm going to say 80% of who we are being exposed to on a top tier level. That's the nigga factory. That is what I'm striving to expose. And if we don't understand that that is intentional, that this mainstream view of us as former or present gangsters, former or present drug dealers, former or present inmates, former or present pimps, that if this is not intentional, then what is it? It's gotten to the point where really our biggest heroes, the ones that are painted on murals, are no longer people like a Malcolm X who denounced his past and became from that point forward a family man, a 100% diehard activist, a thoroughly moral and, and incorruptible human being. It's no longer people like, like the present day versions of that. It is only, it seems to me, in this day and age, it is only rap artists, and many of them previously involved in the things that I mentioned a, a minute ago. It reminds me of that parable that people often mention about a frog in the water, in a pot of water, and you don't turn the stove all the way up. You turn it up slowly and gradually, and the water just gets lukewarm and then warm and then a little hot and then hot. And before the frog knows it, the water is so boiling hot and the frog has become so accustomed to the temperature that it doesn't even have the instinct to analyze what's going on correctly nor to jump out. And it boils to death when a frog, if, can, if a frog can do anything, it can jump. But it won't jump. 
because it has become accustomed to these slight changes of degrees. I want us to think about that. I'm sure I'll get slayed to some extent just for bringing this up. I usually do. But I'd love for our community to start having this conversation. Because meanwhile, there's students that are excelling. There's students from the hood that's excelling. There's students that are being born in the hood and in middle class and in upper class neighborhoods of ours in our communities that are looking for a route. They want to be black. They want to be excellent. They want to invest. They want to be aware and conscientious of the issues that's, that surround us. And they are, they are pretty much ignored right now. And the only prototype that seems to be heroic, or at least placed on a platform as heroic, is those of us who were initially all those things I mentioned, pimps, gangsters, so on and so forth, whatever version of that, and then started to evolve, and then their lives were ended early. So I don't know. I know there's likely exceptions to what I'm saying. I'm just, that to me seems to be the main theme. And if so, if that is the main thing, that is accepted by us as a community, then the nigga factory is still at work even when we're striving to change the narrative from, okay, he's a gangster to he's a loving father, he's a loving family man, so on and so forth. So let's go deeper, let's think about it, let's critique these things. Let's have a deeper conversation.